And then I caught my first charge. I was 16. I got my first job. And I was working at Target. And I was a cashier. <laughs> the money, bro. I just started taking money out of the cash register. As time got over, I became cashier manager. And I had the key to the safe. And uh, it was Black Friday one year. Thanksgiving night. I didn't have I didn't have dinner with the family for Thanksgiving. I had to go to work. And I was pissed. I was pissed. Because I tried to call off. But work wouldn't let me. I was closing one night. And I cleaned out all the registers. Put the money in the safe. But instead of taking the money that I took out of the registers, I took the money that was in the safe. And it was almost close to like $10,000. So today's episode is with Dylan. Now Dylan tells us about growing up around his family that was using drugs and they would nod out and he would think that they were falling asleep. So he became disgusted with addiction early. Later on through peer pressure and friends that were using Xanax, he started using Xanaxes. He talks about liking, liking to fight in school. So uh, the aggression from the Xanaxes kind of made things a little bit worse for him. Eventually he ends up getting caught embezzling money through a cashier job and does some time. This changes things for Dylan, and uh, he tells us all about it in this episode. It takes a little time for Dylan to warm up. He's a little nervous at first, but you can see it when he settles in, starts telling the story a little bit more. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. All those things really help this small channel. If you enjoy this episode of Chopping It Up. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Dylan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's up, bro? What's up, boss? So you're an early riser too, right? Yeah. You get up early like me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I appreciate you reaching out, man. Of course, of course. You know I mean, you made it here quickly. I did, I did. Yeah, yeah. So introduce yourself, man. Tell us a little bit about you. Tell us why you wanted to come on today. Man, my name's Dylan. Uh, I'm from Sterling. Uh, I'm 23. I mean, I just reached out, man, to share my story. Uh, I feel like I got a hell of a story to be shared. Okay. And you're young too, right? Yeah, man. So where do you want to start? You want to start like childhood, you know? I mean, where do you, where do you think things started um, dictating what you were going to do? So you're uh, raised in Sterling, mom and dad stay together? Nah, uh, mom and dad split when I was seven, okay. seven, eight. Um, you go with mom, you go with dad? Dad. Okay. Uh, me and mom, we had an apartment. Uh, in Loudon. Uh, Dad was in and out. Uh, he could be there. He was there when he wanted to be. Right. You know. Um, fast forward, not too much happened then. I mean, you know, he was in and out of jail, in and out of prison. Dad was. Yeah. Okay. But, I mean, that was before then. You know, before I was even born. You know. I've so heard... pops was in and out of trouble before you were conceived. Yeah. Okay. What kind of trouble? Uh, mean drugs, running the streets with his friends, just knucklehead. Okay. Uh, and then it finally caught up with him, you know. Um, fast forward a little bit, I get to middle school. That's where it really went downhill for me. Okay. Um, you know, I really. Where do you go to middle school at? Sterling Middle, okay. in in Sterling. Um. That's when I started seeing a lot of. Sh and started understanding what my parents wanted to keep me from. Okay, my how so? um, On my mom's side, um, heroin was a big use. Not mom, but my grandmother and her brother. Okay. Um, it was around. <laughs> yeah, you see that too, right, bro? <laughs> you see it, right? I gotta get it. <laughs> Got his ass. <laughs> I got him, bro. I got him right out the air. Yeah, you did. Okay, but, sorry. Um, where was I? Middle school. Mom and dad. Mom didn't want you to see the heroin so, use. So, I mean, at that point, at that time, I didn't know it was they were using dope, you know. Um, but like I said, I got to middle school. I started, you know, I went through dare. I went through classes you know i i'm not dumb you know right so there was like drugs yeah was it, it was like that it was like that class they teach you about drugs tell you not to do drugs right, you see it uh, on the side of cop cars yeah, and all that kind yeah. of stuff okay um you know but then you know we're sitting at functions or we're sitting at the house and you know watching tv and you know they start nodding out and you know you see it for the first time and you're like you know yo you good like tired yo go to go, go to bed how old do you think you are then 
That was probably like 12, 13. Okay, so you have no understanding. Like, no. You just think they're sleepy. Yeah. Hard day at work. You know, because my grandma, she's a painter. You know, she taught herself how to paint. So okay. she had her own business. Yo, like oh, she's, like a house painter, commercial nah, painter? No, like she paints windows. Like if you want a mural done on your window, yo, oh, she's okay. the woman to call, bro. Gotcha. Like, yo, she could do it, you know? But, you know, I would go to jobs with her, help her, get up on the ladder, scrape the windows off, you know? You know, do the good <laughs> Um, But it was like, bro, it got to a point where I started seeing it over and over and over. And it was like, all right, what the f*** is going on? And, you know, I would ask my mom. I'd be like, yo, what, what is this? Oh, don't worry about it. Oh, don't worry about it. Um, not so much, oh, don't worry about it. It was, oh, come this way or don't look at it or try not to pay attention. So it was like, okay, now I got to figure out something to. I got to figure out something else to do. Instead of sitting on the couch watching TV with them, now I got to fill that up with something else. You know, now okay. I got to either go outside, play basketball. All right, why? Just because you, you don't just, look at it? Yeah, just because I didn't want to be around it. And, you know, and it got progressive more and more over the time. Like, yo, I don't want to be around this, bro. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, they're sitting there eating and falling in their cereal. Yeah, bro. I got you. And it was like, there was this one time, me and my uncle, we were playing a, playing a video game. And, man, this dude, this dude was sick. This dude was sick, man, and... Sick from withdrawing, you Yeah. Mean? Okay. I don't know if he was withdrawing or... That he had was just... Kicking his ass, mm -hmm. I should say. But... Yo, this man was throwing up black stuff. It looked like... Tar. Okay. And it was like... And that right then is when I told my mom... We gotta do something. And nothing happened. So mom's not a user, though? Mom's not a user. Okay, but she just knows she's probably been around it's it her just, whole life. It, yeah, I mean, it, it all started happening when we lost with my uncle, their brother. Okay. He had muscular dystrophy. So this was grandma's son, obviously, right? Yeah. Grandma had three. She had my mom and then my two uncles, Michael and David. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, shit, when we lost David, I mean, it was, everything fell, man. So do you know if grandma was using before that? She wasn't. Okay. At least I don't think, you know, but I don't think she was. I don't think anybody was other than, you know, when David was around, everybody would smoke weed, have a good time. Like, man, the man was in a wheelchair, you know, he could, he lived a hell of a life. He was the flyest dude you ever know. Like, never had to tie his shoes, like, played video games. He could, But you put a gun in his hand, he could shoot a gun. And he was in a wheelchair. So it was like, and I lost him. We lost him in 2011. So it's been some time. 15 years. Yeah. Well, 13 years, sorry. Yeah. He was born on Christmas. He was a Christmas baby. Okay, so how does that affect you? Where does your life go from there? Let's get back to you. Like, does all those things come into play for how it shapes your life? Yeah, that was my first major loss. Okay. Um... I never really knew how to deal with death or I'm not going to say deal with death because, you know, you don't know how to deal with death. I mean, it's hard, but it was like he was he was a main factor in my life. Like it, it was hard. And so he was what, like 10 years old then. Yeah. And I remember because my family, like we're like on the Italian side. They bring the body for the viewing to the house. So, like, we'll have an open casket viewing at the house. And, like, friends and family, like, the door's open. We'll do a 48-hour viewing. The house has to be a certain temperature for the body. Um, but you can come whatever time you want, 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. The door's open. And it was just like that. That. That's another thing, like, that f***ed with me. It was like, bro, like, I could wake up. And go downstairs and see him if I wanted to. But he wouldn't talk to me. Did you understand that at 10 years old? I did. And it was like... The last day he was there at the house... Um, someone was supposed to pick me up from school. And where my dad's parents lived was right by my elementary school. But... 
I would say it was like a mile and a half away from where my mom's parents my my mom's parents lived. Okay. So nobody picked me up from school, so I got on my bike and I rode over there. It was the last day. Everybody's crying, everybody's doing everybody's hollering and I'm like for some reason I wasn't crying. And I was ten years old and I I wasn't crying. But we go to the funeral and they close the casket and I broke. It, I broke. And it was like that was my first major loss. My first major loss. So this guy was kind of like your pops. Was your pops involved in your life as much as this guy was? I mean, he wasn't much like my pops. Um, I mean, pops was in the picture when he wanted to be. Let's right, say but you that. looked up to this guy. Yeah. All right. You respected him. Yeah. You think you respected him more than your dad? At the time, yeah. Gotcha. At the time, yeah. I did. All right, so how do you deal with that at 10 years old? Like, how does that affect everything? Like I said, you know, that's when everything went downhill, you know. Everybody's, you know, it, it, everybody lost it. You know, my mom, you know, even though it, you know, it was her brother and everything, I mean, she held it, she held it down for everybody, for real. She held it together the most, adult-wise, you know. So everybody else starts using, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. So now you're you're watching that at ten years old. Where does this come into you getting in trouble? Um, I started getting in trouble at I started getting in fights in, in middle school. Um and you know, fight after fight after fight. Over what? Like you just wanted to fight? You just thought that um, was something cool to do? Nah, some I mean most most of the time people would some somebody would come slick out of their mouth about my mom. You know, it was the meal mama jokes, bro. Mm. Back in the day. My bad, that was my alarm for some reason. Um, yeah, I definitely remember the mama jokes. But it was like, I don't know, bro. For some reason, I couldn't take that. Shit. Like, and it would be like, it wouldn't be you were doing a yo mama joke contest or we're going back and forth telling your mama jokes. It's like, nah, you didn't like what I said and you just came out your mouth about my mom. So now I'm gonna smack about you. And then I would get suspended. And then over time, it wouldn't be so much about my mom no more. It would just be I'm an I was an angry person. Yeah, shut that off. Yeah, I did. Thank you. Um, it would just be that I was an angry person, and what the fuck, bro? It's definitely not off. <laughs> but I don't do not disturb. My bad, bro. Nah, you're good, man. Um, I was just an angry person, you know, and at that time I didn't know why I was an angry person. And I was 13, 14 years old. And then I caught my first charge. Um, I was 16. I got my first job. And I was working at Target. And I was a cashier. And <laughs> the money, bro. I just started taking money out of the cash register. And... As time got over, I became cashier manager, and I had the key to the safe. And uh, it was Black Friday one year, Thanksgiving night. I didn't have I didn't have dinner with the family for Thanksgiving. I had to go to work, and I was pissed. I was pissed because I tried to call off, <clears throat> but work wouldn't let me. And I was closing one night. And I cleaned out all the registers, put the money in the safe. But instead of taking the money that I took out of the registers, I took the money that was in the safe. And it was almost close to like $10,000. So then I went back to work like a week later. And the cops were there. And my manager was there. And they were like, we need you to call your mom. And I was like, why? What's going on? Like, I was playing dumbfounded, you know. I was like, I acting like I didn't do anything. And um, they had charges on me for embezzlement. And uh, and I thought it was a joke. You know, I thought, thought nothing was going to happen because that day they let me walk away with my mom. They didn't 
cuff me. They didn't take me away that day. They gave me my papers and they let me go. So you almost felt like you got away with it in that moment. Yeah. Um. So then, what happens next? This is when I start getting into drugs. Um. While you're, because obviously they charge you, you're going to court, right? Yeah. So as you're going to court, you as start. I'm, yeah, as I'm going through, the, as I'm going through this, I started uh. Started pop taking Zans. Okay. Well, let me take it back. Well, when, back in middle school, I started smoking weed with everything, you know. Fast forward. I started taking Zans through all this. And, uh, bro, it was. Where are you getting Xanax as a 16-year-old kid? You don't got to drop no names or nothing, but is it through a person selling them to you? Or are you stealing them? Or are you buying them off the street? A person selling them to me off okay. the street. So. I mean, bro, I took, I took a bar, and it was like, that's two milligrams. You know, that's a lot of Xanax for, hell yeah, for a regular person. Some people take, uh, uh, you know, twenty five percent of a milligram, and they're good. Well, I got to, ha I had to take five. I got to one point, I had to take five of those a day, just to feel what one would make me feel mm -hmm. like. Quickly too. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd have to put all five in my hand and pop them all at the same time. Just to be able to feel what one would make me feel like. Crazy. Why do you feel like you wanted to take them? It's not that I felt like I wanted to take them. It was... I saw everybody else, t my friends taking them, mm -hmm. that I thought were friends at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and it was... So what did you see them doing? Like, your friends are taking Xanax, and you haven't taken any yet. What do you watch them do that makes you want to take it? I couldn't even tell you what the fascination was about it. I just wanted to f do it. I mean, are they laughing? Are they giggling? Are they? I mean, until like it kicked in. Fun? Until it kicked in. I mean, and then I mean, if I mean, if you have a tolerance, I mean, you might not black out. Depending, you know, if you it, it it. Well, it depends on how many you take. Yeah. And all those things considered. So what you didn't like to see them black out, like. I mean, nine times out of ten, they really didn't black out unless. Somebody was just like, yo, we're about to get super f***ed up tonight. And then they did it on purpose. Or they, it, nine times out of ten people would black out. They, they would take them to mm -hmm. do black out on purpose. So I'm just trying to understand, like, you know, our brains were f***ed up because you're not wanting to do it, but you're seeing all these people high and you want to join in. Yeah. But why do you want to join in? Like, all you're doing is seeing them black out. You were disgusted by the nodding out earlier <laughs> with your family. But this is something different, right? This is like, hey, I want to be a part of this. Yeah. Is, is it, does that describe it a little bit? Yeah, it does. I felt like it, I felt like I was missing out on something. Right. Because everybody else is doing it, but you're just a bystander. Just watching on the outside. Hmm. So, peer, is anybody telling you to take them? Or are they like, here, bro, try this? Are you turning them down? At f at first, yeah. Okay. At first, I was like, no, I'm good. Like I'm straight. I don't want. It. And then you know, it was like. We would chill every day, same people every day, and they were doing the same shit every day. And it was like, you know, it got to a point. I was like, you know, maybe, it, why not? Right. Give me one. Right. Yeah. And then it was like, you know, I, I took it, and I go to stand up, and you got that feeling. And you're like, whoa. Nice. It feels good. Nice. What? <laughs> Yo, all that stress. Right. Gone, all of it. Yeah, man. And that shit wears off. And then how you feel? Back to reality, ten times worse. Right, but it's but it's worse. Worse. Like if your reality was a five on the shit list, you take a Xanax, it goes all the way to zero. But then when you come back, you don't land at a five, right? Maybe you like go a to 10. a ten on the shit list, bro. Like you're just angry at the world. Angry man, bro. Yes. Right. So this had to be like. A significant thing for you already wanting to fight, already wanting to do things like that. Do you act differently through the Xanax stage? Are you fighting more? Are you more aggressive? You know, I honestly couldn't tell you, but I don't remember. I know. That's what sucks the most, isn't it? I don't remember. I couldn't tell you what. I, 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 I couldn't tell you. How much money do you think you spent on Xanax? 
Probably close to like two thousand dollars. And and for what? So you can't remember the good times you had. <laughs> Telling mm-hmm. me makes no sense, does it? Our no, f- doesn't. brains are crazy. All right, so let's get to where the charges go. Where do the charges go? Do you get locked so, up for that? We go to court. Um, go to court. Judge gives me a deferred findings for a year. What's so, that mean? So they're like, all right. Basically, it's like null processing it. Okay. So it's like, we're going to give you deferred findings. If you can stay out of trouble for a year, mm-hmm. they get tossed. First offender status. Basically. Yeah. And you know me. I'm like, all right. So I go. The first two, three months are good. Boom. I go get in a fight. Boom. I go get in another fight. And then that one was at my school. We were, I was on the way to school. And me and my me and my good friend uh Kobe <laughs> and we're sitting at the bleachers man we're smoking the J before we go to go to school and there was this kid that I always fought and if I fought one kid if I got into a fight it was one particular kid every single fight it was like me and this kid it, it, bro it was like fucking Floyd May Mayweather Oscar De La Hoya bro I swear to God we always fought just going back and forth. Just going back and forth. Every time you've seen each other, y'all had to settle something that was unsettled. Something. So we walked by, and, you know, I mumbled something under my breath. I'm like, oh, look at this dude right here. He turns around. He's like, oh, what'd you say, bitch? And I'm like, say it again. And he was like, you know, he was, he played the guitar. You know, he wrote his longboard. So it was like, I didn't, we weren't in the same group, you know. So, like, he started walking towards me, bro. And I just, I just hit him, just hit him, and next thing you know, we were on the ground, and there were school buses and shit honking and everything, and my friends were recording, and so, you know, I get to school, and my adrenaline was running, so I didn't see that my hand was all bruised, and I had his blood on my hand and everything, I was just, I was still ready to go, you know, so I get to school, and the security guard, like, Security officers right there, and they knew me because I, I got in a lot of trouble. So he looked at my hand. He's like, "Oh, what happened to your hand, Dylan?" And then that's when I looked down at it, and I'm like, "Oh," f-. and I try to cover it up with my sweatshirt. I was like, "Oh, nothing. Like it's nothing." Got to first block. About I was in first block for about not even thirty minutes, bro. Not even thirty minutes. And the cop and the principal came and got me. My mom was in the office, and they locked me up for assault and battery. So then they took me to the JDC Juvenile Detention Center, and I went to the Juvenile Detention Center for the night, and I had court the next morning. And the judge put me in the youth shelter. The judge sent me to the youth shelter for six months. So take me through going into the Juvenile Center for the first night. How's that work? Bro, door, I was to- to, door to door. They take you in. You're in the cop car, right? You're cuffed up, right? Bro, I was terrified. Okay, so you're cuffed up in the cop car. They're taking you. You're scared to death. I didn't know what to think. I didn't because I didn't know. I mean, I've heard stories, mm-hmm. but it's like. So your expectations were met or was it worse or, or better? Not as bad. Like, how would you describe it? All your expectations are set up for certain things. They're like, prison's this, jail's that. And then when you get there, it either is that or it's not that. I'm not going to say my expectations were met Mm -hmm. because all jails and prisons are different. Right. Um, But for the juvenile detention center, I mean, it. I would say now they weren't met for a juvenile detention center because, I mean, I understand we're kids and everything. But, I mean, bro, they had a free roam in that bitch, bro. What? Free roam. Like, you could, like, once you get into the day room, Mm -hmm. bro— once you're out of your cell and you get into like where the cafeteria is at and mm-hmm. the classrooms mm-hmm. are at, I mean it's carpeted. Like Do they fingerprint you and all that too no. when they book you. No, so they but they take, make you strip though. So they but, can't take your fingerprints because you're underage. No, uh, I mean I don't know that, but right. I did. I, I didn't, didn't get take your yeah, fingerprints. I didn't get fingerprints. Strip search. You make sure you don't have any drugs or weapons on you. And then you. they made you take a shower. Okay, and then it de-louse you. Yeah. Put that shit on you. Make sure you ain't got no lice. Yeah, and okay. then. They give you your jumpsuit. jumpsuit. Strainer jumpsuit, too? One peach jumpsuit? No, it's two piece. Okay. But it was all luck, green. Got lucky on that one. Yeah. And two then piece is always better. They were doing a. Then you go to medical, right? No, nah, not for juvenile. Juvenile, was, okay. it was it was really small for juvenile. So it was like we sat there with the deputy. You know, they took our blood pressure. Mm-hmm. They did our the temperature and Vitals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then um, 
There was just like there was a cell that they put us in into where I sat in that cell all night. Holding cell. Holding it's cell. It's like one person and, cell or yeah, a couple people. It was a one person cell with right. a camera in the corner. Yes. So those are the holding cells kinda of like they're making sure they can keep an eye on yeah. you, you don't hurt yourself or uh poop something out that, <laughs> yeah. that they don't want you to have. Yeah. And then they gave me the straight blanket for like the uh they didn't have no more blankets, like regular blankets. Mm-hmm. So they gave me the blanket that the suicide people use. Hmm. And it was like, bro, I'm like, what the what do you mean you don't have blankets, bro? Right? And it's like, you know, I'd rather have a wool blanket than like, bro, you can't bend. Bro, that shit is so mm-hmm. straight, bro. It's like, what the it's, hell? It's kind of like a moving Sleeping blanket. Sleeping like this, bro. Hey, it's kind of like a moving <laughs> yeah. blanket, right? You ever, you ever use U-Hauls? I got the moving yeah. blanket. Yeah, like but I used to those, work for a moving company, so I, mean, I know exactly what you're like talking about. It's a cardboard. Yeah, they suck. So then I finally was able to go to sleep. So you're in juvenile for what you say again? A, a night. One night. Yeah. So you go in, you stay there, and you're in that holding cell the whole time? The or? whole night. Okay. The whole night until the morning. And then they move you to where you can roam. I go to court. No, and the next morning I went to court. Okay. And then that's when they moved me. That's when they sent us me to uh, the youth shelter right up the street. You go to the youth shelter. I mean, it's two people a room. You still go to school, though. You can go to your normal school. You just got to catch the bus from the shelter. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, bro, you eat dinner there on the weekends. You breakfast, lunch, dinner. So you're sentenced to a second house, I guess. Like, it's like jail, but you still get to go to school. And they took you on outings, too, though. So it was like on the weekends, we would go bowling or we would go to Great Falls. Mm -hmm. Um, We'd go to the, we'd go to Washington, Washington, D.C. We'd go to the city. To get to do. Yeah. So it was like, I mean, and the workers there, like, the, the, uh, I wouldn't say camp directors, but because it wasn't a camp, but the directors there, they would like, uh, they would bring it from their house. So like, there was this one lady, she would bring her Wii, and we would play Wii. We play Mario Kart on the hmm. weekends, and then like you know, some nights like I remember when I was there, it was when the Caps won the Stanley Cup, and uh, they let us stay up until the game was over, and we had school the next morning, and we were up to like. 12 30 watching the caps game <laughs> and it was just like you know it was fun but it's not where i wanted to be okay so the consequences turned out to be not as much of a consequence as yeah because it got fun but it's, it's like youth man so there's a, that's a big thing with like how our system works right you do something wrong you either get punished for it or you whatever or nothing right or nothing at all and some people are punished but it's like other people aren't so yeah. like you're put in there but they did give you something to do i think that's kind of good for especially for you stuff you know it was like it was, it was weird bro it was mind-boggling because it was like the showers that they had there they were jail showers bro it was that you had to they, they operated the same way mm-hmm. that they didn't jail. you got to press the button mm-hmm. and then once that was off you got to press the button again mm-hmm. and it was like that's how it was but then when you get out of the shower and you dry off you get your lotion on bro i shouldn't be able to come out and get on the ps4 bro like it's it, you know but it, it, it's like mind-boggling so yeah i guess that goes both ways right you know if you're talking about the punishment of it no you shouldn't have been able to have fun because you're supposed to be punished but as a kid too man it's kind of like it's also to know, keep man. you sane too I, yeah. I i understand it now but it's like it's catch 22 man for sure yeah it is and so do you learn anything from that experience or do you think you just went in and hey i got to play Wii and y'all took me on vacations bro this was awesome is that i mean after left? the shelter i will say the fighting did die down okay. the trouble the trouble died down i would say i was still doing street shit or knucklehead shit, but not getting caught or not getting in trouble so where does the xanax go when you go into this place you stop xanax are you using them all the way up to the door uh i was using them when i could even inside nah school i was getting at school right at, but at this point so no urine screens at this shelter place i mean it was but i was timing it like i knew xanax stayed in my system for five days so i would do it one week and then i wouldn't do it for two weeks and wait for the urine and then i would piss and then it would be clean and then it'd be the next day after i urine but i go to school and i get one and i pop it and then it off to the races bro so what happens when you come home from that you get out of that place, you come home, you go back to where you were? I mean, there would be some days that I was still feeling it, and I would have to duck off in my room so that nobody knew that I was high or okay. the directors wouldn't knew that I was right. high. But then there were some times that I was like, you know what, man, fuck it. Like, 
if y'all catch me, y'all catch me. Like, it is what it is. Like, this is, this is what it is, bro. If y'all have a problem with it, send me back to the JDC or fucking help me. And that's what it was. And, and I never really got caught. I mean, there was sometimes they suspected, like, yo, you feeling all right? You have a good day at school? I'm like, yeah, man, I'm just tired, bro. I'm not feeling well. And that was that. Hmm. <coughs> So how long do you sit in there? I was they they said they sent me to the JDC for six. I mean for the to the youth shelter for six months. I was there for a total of eight and a half months. Um, the kid that I fought wanted to put in a protective order on me, and we go to the same school, but with me being in the shelter, the bus came and picked us up at six fifteen. School didn't start until the final bell didn't start until nine fifteen, bro. So I was at school. F- Two and a half hours, two hours, 45 minutes early. And my crib, my house was 15-minute walk. My actual house where my mom and everybody lived at. So it was like, all right, y'all drop me off at school. Man, I'm going to walk to my actual crib and go see my family. Because I couldn't see my family when I was in the shelter. Like, I could, only get, I could only get visitation days on Saturday. Hmm. So that was the, like, so I was like, I get off the bus, bro. I haul ass to my house. I go have breakfast with my, with my family. And then... Walk back to school. My friends would meet me at the crib. We would roll up. We would roller J and we would spark a J on the way to school. Every day. And then, you know, they knew I had, they knew we would like, we wouldn't get in trouble so much for smoking when they pissed us. I mean, we always came up with some bullshit excuse. For we? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, it was fucking illegal but a couple of years ago. So it was like, you know, they had a big problem with that shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I got locked up many times for a couple puffs of weed. So it was like, you know, I mean, I try to come up with anything, any excuse I come up with for them not to piss me just so I can get my urine clean. Mm-hmm. And I did, you know. Um, just one time, man, I knew I had a urine. I had a urine screen when we got back. I was sitting in art class. And I went, I got a glue stick. Told this kid, I said, Yo, I need you to piss in this glue stick, bro. Piss in the glue stick. And I went back to the shelter. I, I nutted the glue stick so I kept it warm. Went back, poured the piss in the joint, and I passed. I went back. I gave the next day. I went and gave the kid twenty dollars. All right. I was, like, hey, I was like, here, bro. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> um. But yeah, bro. So um, you spent six months in there, five and a half months in there, right? Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Yeah. That's what I meant. Are no, you good? Eight and a half. So you're sentenced to nine. And you get out like a couple days early, yep. 15 days early. What's that, your good time? Yeah. All right. So where do you move from there? Where do you go from there? Do you go back home? Yeah. I went back home. Um, that's when I started smoking cigarettes. Because hmm. um, like, I wasn't allowed to go out. When they, when they let me go home, because the way it was is my lawyer at the time wasn't trying to like, he wasn't doing his job. He wasn't trying to get me home. He was like, oh, well, you're doing good in the shelter. You're complacent. Like, you're doing straight. There's no more trouble. Like, you're straight. Why don't we keep you there? Like, nah, bro. I want to go home. Like, what the hell? Why do I want to be here? So I wound up getting a public defender. I wound up getting a new public defender. And, bro, he he didn't know shit about my case. He picked up my paperwork, and, like, we were literally going right in front of the judge. He was like, hold on, Your Honor, I need 15 minutes. We went out, he looked at my paperwork, we came back in, and he was like, Your Honor, why is this kid still in the shelter? He's been in the, he's been in the shelter. You guys sentenced him to six months in the shelter. He's been in here for eight and a half months. Why is he still here? Mr. Jacobs, go home. Bet, say less. Right. I'm out of there. Like, yeah. you know? Looked at the looked at the prosecutor looked at the public defender. I was like, yo, bro, thank you, bro. Like, I don't know what the f- you just did or what hasn't been done. Yeah. yeah. But So who was the other lawyer? Uh, Charles Kohler. Like, was he a paid lawyer or was no? Nah, he... he was a public defender. Yeah, they're way overworked and way underpaid. Um, but way overworked and way underpaid, and you get shoved under the, you know. They don't I mean, I've had my luck. Case. I've had my luck with <laughs> public defenders. I will say, I've had my luck. Um, now, where are we now? Um, I'm home from the shelter. Nothing really happens. When I get home from the shelter, um, when did Nan die? My Nan died 
the 10th of March, 2018. That is when shit hit the fan again. That was another major loss. Um, nothing really happened from the time I got out of the shelter till then. So we can fast forward till then. Um, okay. Like you're not using or nothing during that? You're not going to jail? You quit fighting? Yeah. Okay. Wasn't doing nothing. Um... She passes away. Um, I mean, grandma and my uncle, they were still using. Like, while all, while all this was going on with me, they were still using. Um, that one hit my mom hard. That was my mom's best friend. Uh, my mom didn't use. My mom didn't get high. It's just my mom got very, very depressed. And for that little moment, I lost my mom. Like... Not to drugs or to depression. She was in her room a lot. I barely saw her. Like, if you wanted to see my mom, you'd have to go to the room. You, She would not come out of the room. And it was like she wasn't herself. Um, She was very low. Mm-hmm. Grieving. And that hit me hard because I'm a mama's boy. And I'll say that proudly. I'm a mama's boy. Like, yeah, anything happens to my mom, bro, my world is done. I'm done. So are you taking care of moms? Like, what well, you... Moms are straight. Moms are good. I'm Mom... saying during this time. Oh, I mean, no, I wasn't. That's, I went back to using myself. Okay. And my stepdad was taking care of everything. Um, trying to do the best he could, you know. Um, he had, we had me, my little sister, and my little brother. Um, so, I mean, he had us to worry about, plus my mom, trying to make sure she's straight and stays as straight as possible, you know? Um, but then, yeah, I started using again. Same thing, Xanaxes? Yeah. And my mom weaned me off the first time. I didn't go to rehab for the first time I my mom fucking weaned me off slowly like I know it look might sound fucked up but she had me go to my my dealer and get enough to where I could wean myself off and she gave them to me half I mean we started at a full and then it started half and then it got to a half I got to where I only needed a half and then it got to where I needed none she slowly weaned me off it's called tapering yep and then I got to a point to where I didn't need them anymore and that's when I came home from the shelter so she weaned you while you were in the shelter no when I came home oh okay when I came home okay so you're off of Xanax's mom's depressed and you start using again yeah, and that's when I started smoking weed heavy, too. Okay, so you're smoking and doing Xanax. It's like, what's the consequences of that? How long does that last? You, you what do you mean? Using, like, what what happens? Are you just using? You, just, can't, you know what I mean? Or I'm like, just using Me, it. for example, if I if I start taking Xanaxes, I'm going to go steal some shit. Oh, no, I'm going to go using, or I'm going to do something. I was There's just using to forget about it. I was just using to forget shit, man. And at this point, remember, like, how I said, blacking out on purpose? That's mm -hmm. what I was doing. I was numbing the pain all the way to just put me to sleep. Yeah. You know? Let me just forget about it. Bro. Just because mom's just because of everything. At that point, everything. Dad really wasn't in the picture at this point. Okay. Dad, I think, was uh I don't I can't recall where dad was. So you're still running with the same friends? Are you y'all using the same you know? Uh some of some of the friends got locked up and then there was only like three of us. Um one of my good friends, he moved to California. He was at a party and shit popped off. And he winded up shooting into an open crowd. And he hit a female. And they wound up giving him 15 years in prison in California. Stop touching the mic. My bad. Because that's every time you do that, it's... <laughs> my fault. Yeah. All right. So he shoots some chick. How's that How's that work out? What, he gets 15 yeah. years? Like, yeah, I mean, shit. It was, like, just, was this a gang thing? Like nah. a fight thing? Like, why I, does he shoot into a crowd? I have no idea, brother. 
It just we we all I heard mean, about it. He moved who to California. Does that? He, he 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 moved to California with his fam with his mom, and it was like I mean he was he was on crazy shit even when he was here. So it was like I mean we knew something was gonna happen, but we didn't know he was gonna do that shit. So when we all found about I found out about it, it wasn't like a wow or a, damn we didn't see that coming. It was like oh well. Okay, so how does this affect you? I mean, it really didn't affect me. It was just, like just it was just, you're just coming across. Yeah, These just are the people you're hanging out with. Yeah, shit, just. This was one of the dudes that like was doing the Xanaxes and stuff with you when yeah. he was doing the Xannies. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Rehab. I got put on probation. I forgot what I I got caught driving without a license, and they put me on probation. And I was still using, still using. And supervised probation? Yeah. For driving suspended? It was my second time. Okay. So. I think I got seven days for my second time. See, so they put me, they locked me up. The first time they let me go. The first time they right. were like, my fault. The first yeah, time the they first were time like, if, they let if you, you let somebody too. come get the car, you know, we'll let you go. Right. I was like, all right, bet. Second time, they were like, all right, you got to go. I was like, fuck. So I go, and then the magistrate was like, all right, you can get a PR. I was like, all right, bet. So then I get a PR, and then I get put on probation, and then... How much probation they give you for one driving suspended? A year. That's crazy. That's a crazy. Year. It's just like, wow, okay, let's make sure we get and you was, in jail. Yep. You know, and it was my almost first... almost made it, but let's make sure we get you in here from this year of probation, and was, you're going to go. Yep. And it was like, it was my first time going to adult jail but it was like it wasn't my first time because i didn't go to the back i never got put in gp mm-hmm. so it was like i only made it to intake you know so but still got pr yeah, yeah. so you're right there in booking and they just send you back out the door you didn't get dressed out yeah no nah. right so it was like so then after that you know the magistrate gave me papers i had to go meet with pre-trial you know i had to go check mm-hmm. in with pre-trial and it was like fuck so then i did and i went and i met with pre-trial and it was like all right well for your first meeting we got to piss you so then I piss, and of course, I was dirty. So then it was like, all right, well, we'll give you another chance. You know, it was your first year. You right, know, you got we'll, a couple we'll, weeks we'll, to get know, clean. We'll you, yeah. So I come back, and I piss dirty again. So then they're like, look, we're not going to fuck with you. We're not going to play with you. This is what we're going to do. We can either violate you, or you can go to rehab for six months. Over weed. Xanax. Okay. So I was like, matter of fact, my fault. 30 days. Not six months. 30 days. I'm tripping. It's not to that point yet. 30 days. So I go to the Phoenix house in Arlington. I do my little 28 days, my little 30 days. Come home. Still on probation. You know, my PO was checking in with me at rehab and stuff, you know. So you do your 28 days straight, though. You detox. Yeah. Okay. Like just because that's all the twenty eight days. Yeah, it's not but, rehab; yeah. it's a detox. Yeah, I mean it's they call place, rehab because they had me going through right, classes. But they and, have a place. It's just a place for you to. Because yeah, okay, you're right. And yeah. the way they label it is what they label it. But basically, it's twenty eight days to get straight. Yeah. Because if you ain't clean after twenty eight days, man, you should be feeling a little bit better after a month. Yeah, I mean, because that's what it takes for it. I mean, right. You for know, it to get out of your system yeah. for your dopamine to reset and your body to start trying to act normally. Trying to, yeah. So, get out stay clean for about you feel like that helped you like did you learn shit in there i mean i did i picked up the shit that i wanted to pick up Mm -hmm. you know i listened to the things i wanted to listen to whatever could affect you the way you wanted it to you know the old heads that told their stories you know if your story if i didn't like your story and then it was like all right i'm gonna twiddle my thumbs and wait till your story's over but if it was like if i if i liked your story and something caught my eye with your story then i listened but it was like if I didn't like what I was hearing, I wasn't paying attention. Right. You know, but that's I, also why they offer so many different people to talk and yeah. things too, so people can so, identify with somebody. Yeah, facts. So it was like I picked up a little bit, you know, and I mean, I there's still some of the things that I picked up from going my first time to this day that I I still remember, and like you know, like coping skills and just different. Different shit, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so I got out, and it was like it was a good like two, three months. I stayed clean. Um, and I don't know what it was, man. I just couldn't. At this point, I was addicted to him. You know, at this point, they call was, you. 
It's like this, a phone call in your ear that you nobody else can see or hear, but it's calling you. At this point, it wasn't always taking him to numb the pain or to get high or to have a good time. At this point, I was addicted, bro. And it was like, I couldn't, I, I wanted him. And That's the hardest part to fight, man. Yeah. That's the hardest part to fight when your head's straight, you're clean, you don't really need them, but they just keep on calling. Like, if I just got one. So, I'm clean for three months. I was clean for three months. And I was home for about a week. And my sister, I'm playing my game. Damn, bro, I'm trying not to tear up at this point. This is going to be a rough one. I'm playing my game, and my sister runs upstairs. And she's like, Uncle Mike won't wake up. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, he's in the bathroom. He won't wake up. Jerry shit. We go in the bathroom, and he's face down, not breathing. Purple. Huh. He had overdose. So my grandfather and his friend, they pick him up and they throw him in a bath. About 15 minutes later, he comes back to life. Police come. They take him to jail. They didn't find nothing, but he had dope in his system, so they charged him with possession. So my mom gets us out of there, and my mom takes me my sister and my brother to go to her best friend's house in Herndon. Oh. At this time, my great my grandfather's dad passed away while this is all going on. So then, my mom, my stepdad, and my grandfather, they go to Florida. They catch a flight to Florida to go to the funeral. So I stayed back with my mom's best friend. And I, we were staying at her crib. We were staying at her house. And I had ran out of clothes. So I had to go get clothes. So I had to go back to the house to where my, where my uncle would eat. And bro. I was sitting on the fireplace smoking a cigarette. And I just heard a loud boom in my grandma's room. And I run upstairs, screaming her name. She's not answering me. Not answering. Screaming her name, not answering. I bang on her door, and nothing. Her door is locked. I kick her door down and she's face down on the ground not breathing needle in her arm belt around her arm dope on the nightstand half a Xanax pill on the nightstand took the belt off her arm her window was open took the belt off her arm do that shit somewhere in the room Took the needle out of her arm. I threw it out the window into the uh, into the gutter. Took the dope, threw it in the gutter. Took the spoon, threw it in the gutter. But guess what I did with the Xanax? <laughs> took it. After I took it, I started CPR. I did 10 minutes CPR. And I smacked my grandma one time in the face and she came back alive. <laughs> After that, I got on the phone and I called 911. I got questioned by detectives, cops, till 4.30 in the morning that day. Where's the dope? Where's the rest of the dope? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. My grandma over there on the fireplace, bro. Still nodding out. Still high in front of the cops. That's where my life changed.
house. Uh, I mean, I know that's a, that's a fucked up thing to go through, but like, what did it change about what you were doing on a daily basis? I didn't know what to do after that. I didn't know how to move. I didn't know how to go about my day. But I was in a really dark hole after seeing that shit and after having to do that. You didn't feel proud of yourself for keeping her alive? Nah. Didn't. I didn't have no gratitude. I didn't have, I was numb. Oh, and I got done doing CPR. I literally looked, I, I, I literally asked myself, what the fuck did I just do? How did I do that? How? How did I just save this woman's life? Shit still kills me to this day, bro. I relive that shit every day. Why do you think it hurts you the way it does? Like, I mean, I understand it's a traumatic experience. Do you think it's because of your grandmother? Do you think it's because of the drugs? Like, what part of it affects you in, in just, that way? Just knowing that if it wasn't for me, she would not be here anymore. That's hard, just knowing that she wouldn't be here. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Like, bro, what if I failed? What if I fucked up? What if I didn't do it right? Hmm. Then what? What if what I would have done... Be today, then? Okay, so that's kind of what disturbs you more is what if. Yeah, I was successful. Yes, she's still alive. But what if I fucked up? Okay, so why let that control you so much, though? That's not what happened. It's just... Just trying to give you a little way to challenge it in your head if it hurts you that way. Like It's just, I always deal with those what-ifs, bro. Even though there's there might be a good outcome, I always think about, but what if? Hmm. That's a crazy way to go through life, bro. Like... How many cars did you pass on your way here today? Shit, shit ton. What if one of them hit you head on? Are you going to sit here and worry about all them fucking cars that could hit you head on? You know how many things you go through every single day that is a near miss to your life? How many cars you pass? Every single one of them could kill you. Every one. We go by cars at 55 mile an hour both ways and miss each other by inches. What if? Why don't you think about that that way? How come you don't let those cars disturb you the way you let this disturb you? I have no idea. Just maybe something else to think about, you know what I mean? Like, if I could give you anything that would make you not feel that way, I would like to do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you helped her, right? Yeah. Like, why worry about what what would have happened if you weren't there? You were there doesn't matter right yeah so yeah man don't let shit like that disturb you you know because next thing you know you're using again next thing you know that feeling has overcome you and 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 that same phone call that's from the xanax is is telling you they can make it all right i haven't touched xanax since that night how long ago was that almost six years ago that's awesome congratulations so do you feel like you built a disgust for Xanax? Is there is there anything about them that still calls you? No. All right. Why not? That night. I don't fuck with perks. I don't fuck with fentanyl. I don't fuck with heroin. Mm-hmm. I don't mess with none of that shit. I smoke weed and I don't smoke weed all night. You bring that shit near me, we're going to have a problem. Yeah, uh, I get it, bro. I get it. That's a it's a good thing I have a disgust against. It is. So that happens. Uh, what happens in my life next? Nothing really. That 
after all that, everything calmed down. Um, so let's talk about that six years a little bit here. First of all, like, what do you do every day to keep you from being around that? So you're not right. around the same people. You don't yeah. want to use the Xanaxes. Is there any? I mean, I play. I like. I like to play video games, bro. I like okay. to play a lot of Call of Duty and 2K. So it's like you know. And I got ADHD really bad, so it's like I gotta stay busy. What I about got a job. You got a job. Not right now. I don't. Okay, I'm looking for one. Work. Yeah. What do you do? Like, what kind of work you like doing? Uh, I mean, I like to. I like to drive forklifts. I'm okay. Forklifts. I used to work for a moving company. Um, uh, I worked for a couple, but it's just, bro. You know, one thing I didn't, one thing I didn't believe or keep in mind when people around me say. And I'm not gonna say it's hard for felons to get a job, but bro, it's fucking hard to get a job. And it, and it's like, maybe I'm not applying myself too much or enough. But bro, it's like nowadays everybody wants to do a fucking background check. It's because it's so easy to do. And it's like, bro, when that background check, it's like, bro, I'll do a phone call and they'll be like, yeah, it looks like you're a good fit, this, that, and the third. But we got to do a background check. And it's like, all right, well, I'll be hearing from you, but I won't be hearing from you. Like, So when was your last crime committed? When was the last thing you were convicted of? Brandishing of harm. Which year? How long ago? How many years or what 2021. year? 2021. Yeah, so you got to have, uh, it's about seven years that most background checks go back. Yeah. The, Some of them will tell you that they only go back like two years or three years. So when, yeah. they, when you're putting in, ask them how far a background check goes back. Okay. Ask them that. And if they say it's, you know, it only goes back 24 months, don't say shit. But if they tell you it goes back seven years, say, well, first thing I can tell you is you're going to find this on there. And then you give them an explanation. Mm -hmm. Explain it to you. Tell them right there on the phone. Don't let them just look at your charges and say, oh, he's got this because they just make a, a decision about you instantly. Okay. So when you're talking to them on the phone, this is the best suggestion, you know, just straight up. Tell them, say, I got this. Mm -hmm. This is why I got it. This is what I've done since then. I was stupid back then. I've grown up. Blah, blah, blah. I hope you give me this opportunity. Don't let that little thing right there stop you from having someone as awesome as me work for you type of thing. You I know what I'm saying? No, I dig it. Yeah, I hear it. I think that's one thing that sucks about uh, the way we put in applications for anything, yeah. whether it's a job, a house, to buy something. Uh, it's so impersonal. When I was growing up, we bought houses by talking to you. Mm -hmm. I got to introduce myself. I got to shake your hand. I got to give a vibe and get a vibe from you. You don't get that with the Internet. Yeah, you don't. All they're looking for is your numbers. How mm -hmm. much money do you make? What's your credit score? Do you have any history of you bad stuff? You got a stuff? degree. So on and so forth. And that's what they're judging you off of, bro. And that's mm -hmm. why people like us that, whatever, I quit high school, got a GED, don't have a high education, you know, don't have a great credit score. They laugh at us. Yeah. And and because we're not up there. Yeah. And I don't like, want to be up there. Uh, I do, but. I do. I don't, I don't want to be up there on the level of being looked down yeah. at other people the way they do. If that you know, part, that yeah. That part. I yeah, get you. But part. at the same time, too, I want to be. Uh, yeah. financially independent bro Fact, yeah. i want to take care of myself i want to be able to go out to eat if i want to and not worry about a 20 dollar fucking steak yeah you know what i mean yeah but you can't have any of that stuff nowadays without all these and the more debt you're in the better off you are yeah when it comes to the system they want you to be in debt you go try to get a loan with no credit cards making money <laughs> they won't even give you a loan they but won't. if you have 10 credit cards and make no money they'll give you a loan it makes absolutely no sense. Bro. Probably with the max, with the highest max you can fucking get to. So what are you what are you looking forward to doing now? Like what's going on in life now that you're, you know, what are you looking forward to other than video games? Like you got um, a girl in your life, you got no. kids, any of that kind of stuff? No, I do not have kids. I'm glad everybody else got kids, right. but me. So keep it that way. I'm glad I don't got kids right now. Yeah, you probably don't need them, bro. I, don't know. I have my kids way too young. Yeah, I don't need kids right now. Maybe later on, but. Not right now. Man, just right now, I'm trying to just finish probation, man. That's my main How goal. How much time you got left on that? Shit, I got to get like three and a half, four more years. Okay. Um, When I got sentenced, the judge sentenced me to seven and a half years. Suspended all of it, but six months. So this was, quickly go over this brandishing charge. This was as an adult? Yeah. It was like my first major charge as an adult. So I mean, what happens? You just pulled it out like, yo, I'm going to shoot you? Nah, 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 nah. So... It involves my ex. Um, 
so there was this girl all through high school, but we started talking my freshman year, her eighth grade year. And shit, we still talk to this day, bro. So, uh, yeah, man, like I said, bro, there was this, this girl in high school, bro. She was the love of my life, dog, all through high school. Mm-hmm. Even when I got locked up, you know, she held me down the whole six months. Uh, like I said, we still talk to this day, bro. <coughs> um, But, yeah, so she was over at my house, and her car was in my driveway. And my fucking crazy ex lived out here in Winchester and decided to drive with her sister all the way to Sterling to cause drama. But it's like 1230 at night, bro. And they're out front blaring the horn, screaming my name. Fuck you. Da, da, da. And mind you, two weeks prior to this, she had a dude text my phone. And it was a selfie of them in the car smoking. And under that, it said, I got a 30 clip waiting for you. Wait till I see you. And I'm like, I right, bet. Cool. Like, you know, if you cool, you know, whatever you got to do, champ, do it. This is her new man. Her new man, right? It's mad at you. For a, what odd reason? I have no idea, but okay. <laughs> How old is this dude? I mean, at the time, it, bro, we were like 19. I was 19. Children, so, kid yeah, shit, bro. man. So it was like, all right, do what you got to do, champ. Like, if that's whatever. So I wake up, and mind you, I had my own pistol. So my shit was in my, my drawer right next to my bed. So I grab it and I rack it and I put it behind my back, you know, in my waistband behind my back. And I go downstairs and I open the door and I'm like, bro, what the fuck do you want, bro? Like, why are you here? Oh, I want to fight. Bro, I'm not fighting you. You're a fucking female. I'm not fighting you. So boom, she hit me in my shit. She roughed me up, pushed me. So then I turn around and she sees my gun. Well, I go to run inside and I go to lock the door. Bro, I lock top lock. Here comes this bitch busting through the front door, bro. Bust clean through the door like a linebacker, bro. Takes me to the ground. And by then, when she took me to the ground, my pistol had fell out. So I picked it up and I put it on the step. Well, I get a grab of her and I throw her out the front door. Well, when I throw her out the front door, I see people getting out the car. So when I see people getting out the car, I grab my pistol. And I pointed it at them. And I said, if y'all don't leave, I'm going to start shooting. And I went upstairs. Put my pistol away, and about 2.30 in the morning, the cops came to my house with a warrant for my arrest for brandishing a firearm and threat by text message. You have any idea who called the police? Them. They went to the magistrate and pressed charges on me. They came to cause a problem, and then I gave them a problem, and they went and told them. No, oh, they got what they wanted. <laughs> they got what they wanted from you. Yeah. You're the one that suffered from the whole situation, and they sat back and laughed at you for responding the way you did. Yeah. They got what they wanted. So it's hard to think about that in a minute, man. But like whatever she got from that, she could beat you up. She was just happy to get you locked up, bro. That's some foul ass shit right so, there. So, I mean, and any, any chick that comes at you trying to beat on you like that, I'm putting her down. <laughs> see, bro, I don't, I don't do fuck, bro. It, at that point, if you're hitting me, I am putting you see, down. See, I gave her three chances, bro. I've always lived by, bro. You got three chances. You swing on me. I'll give you three swings, hit or miss. You miss that third swing. I'm going to lay your ass out. And, you know, I I tossed her around a little bit, you know, then hit her in her face. I hit her in her body. But it's like, I don't like doing that shit. No, nah, I wouldn't either, though, bro. bro. It's like. So that's why I just uh, grabbed like you're her. You're tackling my door. You're you're acting like a man. You're yeah. acting like an aggressive, savage man. And, you know, and, and at it's, this point, it's time for you to get treated like one. And I just this, think that's a problem that women think they can come after us like yeah. that. And, bro, don't get it twisted. I've never laid my hands on a woman. Facts. You can ask my old lady right now. I threaten to smack her all the time in <laughs> restaurants, and she laughs because she knows I'll never touch her. Yeah. Never. This is not who I am. Yeah. But when you act like a man, you deserve to get smacked like a fucking man. Straight up. So that's just, I, I don't understand that, how we're supposed to be expected to not be violent back to a woman that treats us that way. Yeah. It, it's hard to do. And trust me, I've been smacked and beaten and had, yeah, I don't want to get into all that, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, bro. Uh, it, that just, that turns me the wrong way. And then the fact that she can just go and, and the police don't and even say like, nothing night, about like, hold up, hold up police before y'all charge me with Brandison. Do you know what happened here? Do you realize that she was trying to come at me like an MMA fighter? You realize they sent me this, this clip, this this message you uh, said, I, bro. I didn't have no witnesses because everybody was sleep, bro. My girl at the time she was sleep upstairs. Well, I'm not gonna say she was sleep. She heard everything, but she didn't watch it, bro. She mm-hmm. was in the room, so it wasn't like she could get on the stand and say, "Yes, I witnessed this shit." 
can't you can't lie. I guess that's like man. another thing too. Like turn your fucking phones on. Like yeah. you got your phones to record that shit, and you see these videos of people just standing there recording, Karen act like a yep. fool. Maybe so that's she what had her sister. She had her sister and God who who knows in the car. So she had a couple witnesses, and yeah, bro. <laughs> so I tried to fight it the best I could. You know, they came with the first deal. They came with the first deal. They said they were going to sentence me to 10 and a half years and make me do two years. I was like, fuck that. I'm not doing it. I'm not taking the first plea deal. You, you got me fucked up. I need something better. So then I waited another three months and I went back for sentencing and they were like, all right, we'll give you seven and a half to spend all of it but six months. So and by is this then, a legal firearm? Was it a legal firearm? No, I had gotten gifted. It so got how's, gifted that, how's that affect the system though? Since it was a gift, it was the illegal? And they made me a not, huh? So since it was a gift, it was illegal or illegal? It was legal. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, and you weren't a felon at this time, so you were allowed to own it. See, they when they charged me, when I went to court and everything, they had brought up my embezzlement mm -hmm. as a juvenile. They brought that up. Mm -hmm. And they charged me as a nonviolent felon. So my charges were brandishing a firearm and possession of a firearm by a nonviolent felon. Because of your past? Because of my past. And if you wouldn't have had that embezzlement, they wouldn't have been able to do that? Nope, because it was legal. So that's how the system works too. Everything, the thing you do, you gets know, they sit here point. and tell you, you know, oh, they'll never be. They can't use your, you can't use your juvenile system. Oh, but fuck that. They, they oh, smoked they me, definitely bro. Definitely do. So, and the only reason why I took that deal is because when I was in county, I was trustee. So I started working, and by the time I had went to sentencing, the way it is in Loudon is if you work, if you're the thirty, every thirty days you're in trustee, and every thirty days you work, you get five days off your sentence. So, when I went in to trustee, I was already four months, four months locked up. So I had a good 20 days off my scent. So it was like, all right, give it to me. Because I, I went to sentencing September, September, August 9th of 2021. And when they sentenced me, I got back to the jail and I put in my good time. I got out September 2nd. So I only did like two more weeks after sentencing. All right. So I put my good time in and I came the fuck home and yeah. I mean, I caught one recent charge recently, but I'm on... Hey, reason charge for what? Fucking driving without a license, man. Come on, bro. <laughs> Why don't you get a license? Man, we were going out, bro, and everybody. I was, I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna be the DD for the night. You know, with I, no driver's license. So look, man, we go and come on, bro. You know that just the, don't even sound smart. We're sitting at the fucking <laughs> gas station, bro, and my friend, and he's in his car and he's blasting music, man. And the fucking cop pulls up and he's sitting there, bro. And I'm like, bro, I know we're gonna get followed. Like I know it. So boom. My first friend pulls out. I get in the middle. My friend pulls behind me, right? Cop pulls up. P cop pulls in behind my friend in the back. Friend gets in the left lane, bucks at you. So now the cop's behind me, right? My friend, he sees the cop's behind me. He gets in the left lane, bucks at you. I'm like, what the fuck? So now I'm stuck with the cop behind me. Cop lights me up, right? And I told myself, I was like, bro, I'm not going back, bro. I'm not I'm not ready for prison. I'm not ready for that shit. I'm not I'm not going to prison for six and a half years, bro. Or whatever backup time they're gonna give me. I'm not doing it. I threw that car in the park and I ran. And I got away for about two weeks and I had probation. And it was either I go to probation or I turn myself into the magistrate. So I turn myself into the magistrate, because if I go to probation, I turn myself into probation, it's gonna be like, oh, he turned himself into probation. Like he didn't give a fuck. So I turned myself into the magistrate and You knew they were looking for you? Oh, shit, bro. They have big warrants out for me. Oh, okay. Warrants so they knew who you yeah, were. Got warrants in Fairfax. So you turned yourself in. What's probation say? Bro, they made me do two of these fucking counseling classes. To, <laughs> what? Bro. Driving counseling? What no, the fuck, bro? It's like decision po It's like decision making uh, and all this shit, right, bro. Right, because you definitely weren't making good <laughs> decisions, bro. They probably so, bro, I turned myself head. in. I turned myself in. The magistrate's like, you know what? I'm going to give you a bond just because you turned yourself in. Right. I'm I've like, always turned myself. I've never ran, bro. And I tell you what, that has always been a benefit for me. So because they know that they're I like, you never intake. ran. You've always turned yourself in. They look at you good. Sat an intake for about eight hours, bro. People came, brought some money up there, bonded me out. And I've just been doing these classes, shit. Like I just finished. I just finished twelve weeks of one class so, uh, a couple weeks ago, and I just started my other class yesterday. So. Once I get that, I'll go back down to a medium level on probation. We'll have to meet with them for three months mm -hmm. at a time. Mm -hmm. I'll be back where I started off. How are they with you uh, smoking? Oh, that shit. They, they, they allow it. They yeah, I got open. No, no, they don't. Right. They, no they card don't, or anything? You don't no have to have card, medical no cards? Nothing. Sweet. And that's they, through Virginia? That Loudoun County. Okay. Probation, probation and parole, District 25. Felony nice probation, man. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, I've seen that change a whole lot from hey, marijuana yeah, getting you 45 days quickly to, hey, just pee in this cup if I it's mean, got shit, pot in it, I don't with, care. I was with a couple people like a couple weeks ago, man. We got pulled over, bro, and I had about like a half on me. Mm-hmm. Car smelled like weed, so they pulled us out. They searched it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I get back in the car. All my shit was still in my mm-hmm. seat. My weed, everything was still in my seat. My blunts, everything. I was like, oh, you know what? This is that shit that... That make nah. y'all cops cool, right? Man. <laughs> that, I think that comes cop to cop too, you know, bro. Because like, bro, like, I feel like you either get, you're gonna get the cool cop, and he's gonna be like, yo, I don't even care, yeah. or you're gonna get the other one that's like that high and tight military type motherfucker's gonna take every yeah. roach, yeah. or you're gonna get the one that smokes, and he's like, mm. he's gonna take it and smoke the shit. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. I should be cool and let him have his stuff, but I could take it and yeah. smoke it on my own. Like, just give me a three five. Yeah, yeah, right. Eight of eight. Split that with me. I'll let you keep half right? of it. <laughs> Right. Hey, that would be some shit oh, when you get pulled man. over by a cop and he's like, just give me half that and I'll let you keep the other half. Right, man. That'd be crazy. But it's like now they can't take it unless it's over an ounce. Right. You can have you can have un, you can have up to an ounce on you. Mm-hmm. You're not and supposed it. to there's, there's like I've been looking into the yeah, laws too. You're not supposed drive. to smoke in a car at yeah. all. Because if you smoke Public. in a car, even when it's sitting, it'll smell like pie, blah, blah, blah. Uh but yeah, they're also actually reclassifying marijuana to a schedule three too, man, which is gonna be super beneficial for everyone. Yeah. Because, you know, fentanyl and, and meth and MDMA, all that stuff's a schedule one, bro. And yeah. then, like, high abuse rates and death rates. I mean, rates, bro, you still like, have people locked up for having fucking weed, man. Yeah, they need to change all that. It's you know, like, oh, come back through and do a whole sweep of the people that you locked up for. But, you know, I guess it's kind of different, too, because they knew they was breaking the law. It wasn't. Yeah. I mean, you know yeah. I mean if, if everybody made fentanyl legal you tomorrow. You just fucking waited. Like. You know, <laughs> right? So uh, before we wrap up, man, what would you say? Do you, do you have like, a, if you had a mission statement, what's Dylan's mission statement? This is what I want to do. This is, you know, my philosophy for life. Man, I just want to be successful, bro. I just want to not. There's always going to be stress, bro. But I want to be able to like, I have to worry about shit, man. Like, I want to be able to sit back and know that I'm all right. I'm going to be all right. You know? Like, right now, I'm all right. And I'm going to be all right. But you hear the difference in the tone? Mm-hmm. It's just like... I don't know, man. It's just... Got to take one day at a time, bro. That's it. Stay away from the shit you know destroys you. And one thing I will say that... You know, my father has always told me... Is... Whoever's watching, whatever. Watch how you move and who you move with. Because that shit will make you late, bro. That shit will get you caught up. Fuck around and just be sitting there thinking, like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah, watch who you trust. Watch how you move and watch who you move with. That's it, man. Yeah, yeah. Anything else you want to say before we wrap up? Nah, bro, I just appreciate you for having me on here, man. I appreciate you for letting me talk, share a little bit of my story. No doubt. Um, yeah, man, thanks. Right Thank on. you. So how about like social media apps, things like that? People can reach out to you or follow Um, Shit, sure, I got Facebook, uh, Dylan Jacobs on Facebook, um, Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram, uh, Ace Runs underscore. I don't know if y'all can see it. Probably so. Ace Runts underscore? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, but other than that, man, I just I don't really be doing too much. That's what's up. Stay out the way, right? Staying out the fucking way, bro. Staying out the way. Hell yeah. Well, I'm glad you came through, man. Oh, uh, yeah, I like bro. to have a couple youngins on, you know what I'm saying? Y'all stories is always a little bit more. It's a little shorter, but yeah. at the same time, too, it's crazy to see uh, the younger generation's yeah, life now. Compared to how ours was, I guess, for me. Hey, man, before we get off here, man, I just want to say, man, RIP Lil Dill. You feel me? We lost him a couple months ago in a car accident. It's terrible. Um, He's a good dude, man. Good kid, bro. Very good kid. Sorry to hear that, bro. Yeah, bro. Man. But, yeah. (coughs) So, y'all know what to do, man. Like, subscribe, share, all them things. Helps this little teeny tiny channel out, man. Uh, I appreciate Dylan coming in, man. Showing some love in the comments. Y'all know how that goes. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. And don't forget, don't sweat the petty things. Pet the sweaty things. Yes, sir. Sweet.